Hi there. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about how Axminster carpet is made. Okay, I'm standing on some Axminster carpet here. This is already finished and actually we're here to just do a final inspection before we ship this out to our customer. As you can see, it's very beautiful. But we're going to go into some of the uh, details about how the carpet is made and some of the things that make the Axminster carpet more economical or more expensive, depending on your design, the order size, and things like that. So um, follow me along. We'll go and we'll start off and look at the loom, and uh, we'll take you through the whole process. Come on. This may not look like it's an action place, but this is where it all starts. This is what's called as the yarn reel. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. But what you see here is many spools of yarn. Now, so here we have lots of spools of yarn. This whole bucket is full of this color, this color, these colors. Now, you might notice that some of these spools are smaller and some of them are bigger. And that's because some of the colors are used more in the pattern and some colors are used less. I'll explain a little. Now what you see here, you see in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve different possible colors. And over here, you see up above, come on over here please, you see a number. And what this is, this tells the person loading the yarn which position on the loom these colors go to. Well, actually, you can see it takes a lot of space to put the yarn. So the yarn is located in a place, we call this the creel room. It's located a little bit uh, far away from the machine. Not too far, but follow me. Here's one roll. Okay, this is for position number 762. And the yarn comes off the spool and it goes into this little tube here. Okay, so where's this tube going? Okay, let's follow it. It goes here, here, here. Okay, and then it joins up with all these other tubes that have been fed from other spools of yarn. And let's keep going all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Ah. You see all these tubes, there's so many of them, right? It's crazy. Maybe someone would be really confused if they didn't do this every day. But from here, we're going to go down to the machine, which is down below us. In this case, the creel room is above the machine, above the loom. That's very common for Axminster. And so we're going to see what happens where these, where the yarn goes. And each one of these tubes always goes to the same spool of yarn. And it, of course, always goes to the same position on the loom. Let's go downstairs and see what happens down there. Okay, so I'm going to give you another view of the creel. I mentioned before that we can do 16 colors. And so this is one side of the creel, which can do 12 colors. And if you look down here, it goes pretty far back. But what's also possible, there's the other side of the creel that we don't use unless we have more than 12 colors. And so this creel can take 12 more colors. So really the creel itself can take 24 colors, but this particular machine can only do 16 colors. There's some machines that can do 24, but that's not very common. Usually most, most patterns need less than 16. All right, that's it for the creel. Okay, now we're here downstairs. Again, up there, that's where the creel was. Okay, now we're back down below. And it's gonna be hard to hear me. Now you can't see all those tubes here, but where those tubes led, they led to all these colors of yarn here. here. 
here. So that means each one of these positions on the machine put the yarn in a row. For four meters, there's 1,104 of them. This particular job is only 2.33 meters wide. So it's a little bit shorter. These things are called the yarn carriers. And you can see all the colors we had in the grill, they're all coming down here to the yarn carrier. And these guys move in and out. And the, the gripper grabs the yarn and puts it down in the pattern. parts of the weed. This here, this is what's called, this is the wet yarn. And then the weed that's the pattern that goes back and forth this way. We also have the warp yarn. And since the warp yarn needs so many pieces, there's actually another creel back here. This is the grill for the warp yard. Again, there's 1,104 of them. They all feed horizontally into the wheat. You can see all pieces of warp yard. Now, for any given carpet pattern, the warp yard and the web yard are the same. They don't change, there's no color to them. But they're in the back of the carpet. So when you have a new job, you don't have to change this. You only have to change all the color yarn, which is in the base of the pattern, and it goes into the grill. We're going to go, we're going to talk about the finishing area. What we saw before was the weaving and the loom. Now here you can see, this is the same job before, actually this is a, one of our one of our products, this is going to go to the corridor. And as I mentioned before, this is only 2.3 meters wide. So this is a, a little bit narrower than typical. We usually do four meters. So we can see many piles of already woven uh, carpet here. Many piles. And not only that, there's more over here. More over here, all waiting to be secondary process. So what's the secondary process? So for the woven carpet, it's very stable, but to make it even more stable, there's a process where we put some glue on the back, which kind of locks everything into place. So the carpet is fed from an accumulator back at that end, and then it comes over from a preheating stage, and then here, you can see that the glue is applied to the back. Now, it's lunch hour now, they're not running, but you can see the bath of glue. And this guy goes back and forth, spreading glue on, and it gets applied to the back. This is not a real job here, they're sort of in between. And the, after the glue gets put on the back, it goes in back into this machine here, and it, it's an oven that cures the glue, that makes it hot, dries it out, and then it comes back out on the top. So what's above us is carpet that's been glued, woven and glued, and ready to go on into the next process. Okay, so now the carpet has been glee, uh, glued and cured, the back is dry, and the next stage then is it, in fact, let's take a look here. You can't really see it, but, but here the back is a little different than the woven carpet because it's got this thin layer of latex glue. So it's very stable now. Now with that carpet being really stable, it's ready to go on through the shearing process. So here, it's pretty flat, but it's 
it's a little rough because the woven carpet isn't totally precision. But it goes into here and it goes into a shear. And this shear is really precise in our factory. There's actually three stages of shearing. So the first one, it cuts here. There's a knife. You can see it looks like a big pair of scissors. It's a helical cutter and it turns like this and it just shears very precisely a tiny bit of yarn off the top. Not only that, that's just the first stage of here. Here is a second stage. This is a fine cut. So it's already been sheared very even, but there's one more cut to make it a little more even. We call it fine shear. And then finally, we have the finish. The finish shearing. Not a lot. In the, in the final shearing, it's the final, really precise cut. Again, the same kind of cutter, but it's just uh, just taking a tiny bit off. So it's really, really accurate. So now here we have the, the carpet that's been sheared, and we get quite a bit of it. And here's another stack of it here. This is a pretty big job. But the next stage will be, it'll be fed into this heater here. And you can't see it now because everybody's having lunch. But from here, the carpet's fed out along the road. There's really strong lights and people, a whole row of people carefully looking for any defects. And if they find any defects, they fix them on the spot. And finally, at the end, the carpet is rolled up and packaged for final shipping. If we we're actually running now, you'd be seeing the people packaging, and getting everything ready to send out the door. But I hope that uh, you enjoyed the little tour here today. I hope we explained to you a little bit of why having the number of yarn colors controlled is really important and why the number of colors compared to the job size affects the price. And I hope we help you understand a little bit about how the back of the carpet is prepared for the ultimate instability and precision in the shearing. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and uh, come back and see us. And if you have any carpet questions, contact us. We'll be happy to help you.